So ladies and gentlemen, like I said earlier, that we posted earlier, the man behind Chutney Soka Monarch, this year is their 21st year, brought to you by Southex, the one and only, Mr. George Singh, special good evening to you sir, Mr. Singh. How you doing? How you feeling tonight? Happy New Year to you. Hi, everybody. I want to, I want to say good night, and, and it's a pleasure being on your program. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, thank you. I mean, um, I know every year everybody looks forward to this. It's Chutney Soka Monarch season time, and for the 21st year, George, you're doing it once again. Like we said, this is never an easy task, and, you know, Chutney, Chutney music is, is a staple uh, culture of Trinidad and Tobago and you help keep it going year after year after year. How, how does it feel to be going into your 21st year? Well, it's going great. Um, I, 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 think that, I think that Chutney music has now gone beyond Trinidad and Tobago. It's really become very popular throughout the Caribbean, especially in places like Guyana, Suriname. It's also very popular in Miami and, and, and wherever you go, well, there's Caribbean crowds. So Chutney has really grown into to, to be a fantastic industry. This, this is our 21st year. We're very excited about it. Um, as you know, Chutney Spoka Monarch has grown every year. And it's really, it's really exciting to be putting this on um, year after year. Now, George, I, I've been to a few of them. I was there when Raymond won. was there uh, last year when Ricky Jai and Ravi won for the 20th anniversary. 20, your, your production, it, it's almost like, I, I compare it and I tell everyone, it's like a Maroon 5 concert. If you ever go to a concert here in America, that's what you bring to Trinidad and Tobago for this night, you know. Tell everybody about the amount of work that goes into something like this. How do you do it? How do you, you know, keep coming well, year after it, year? It is, yeah, it is definitely a phenomenal production. Um, I'm glad you described it as that because that's we. That, I mean, that that's the goal we try to achieve. Really and truly, I think Tati Suka Monarch has become um, probably the largest production in 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 the country in terms of an annual production for Carnival. It's the only thing that is that is that comes close to it, and I, and I don't think it's it, it, it surpasses it. It's the international soca monarch, which is very close to the production. It's a similar production, but I think uh, and I've been a little biased here when I say I think that the soca monarch has a little edge. Well, in regards to yeah, how it's done, because. You know, like I said, I've seen it. I've seen, uh, you know, International Soka Monarch. They're both two different entities. But in regards to, you know, the elaboration that you go into, you know, for, and this is the other thing. As we know, Soka music is on a different level in regards to, thanks to Bungie and them, is getting more world recognition. And Chutney music has always been in the background there. But in regards to the production, you don't, you don't bring it across like that. It doesn't show that. This looks like one of the top premier events every year. Yeah, it is, it is definitely. I think Soka has definitely made some inroads. Um, we, are, we have been trying behind the scenes. To, we have been working with... Uh, this day in particular, I've worked a lot with the artists. I've worked with producers. I think um, people are going to be pleasantly surprised when we move to the semifinals on Saturday at the level and the quality of music that has come out for 2016. Um, I've seen a vast improvement in the quality of the music lyrically, um, the, the music content, you know, the structure of the songs and that kind of thing. So I think, I, I think we're on the right road and, and we're going to get there. We're going to keep trying and, we, and we're definitely going to get there. Bunchy Garland and Marshall Montano are opening doors for Soka. Um, and I think that uh, it's very soon people like Ravi B, K.I., Ricky Jai, Gonna open doors for Chutney. Now, George, in regards to that, I had I had interviewed Bungie just a few weeks ago when he dropped one of his songs, and one of, I asked him that question. I said, Bungie, you helped, you know, Differentology broke open the doors, broke open barriers. You know, we had other songs, Hot, 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 All Right, and stuff like that, Marshall, collaboration with Pitbull and thing. But Differentology is what really helped put soca music on the map. And I said, what do you think in regards to Chutney music, what do we need to have happen for that culture to make that, that, that breakthrough? And one of the things he says, you know, he says, listen, I'm not a Chutney artist, you understand? But he's been around in the industry so long, he does a lot of collaborations and things. And he says, you know, doing collaborations with, with Bollywood artists in them, that will help take it to that level because the music is similar to our East Indian um, compadres, let's say. 
and with their with right. their assistance because Bollywood has made such a huge impact in North America now. TV, music, every single thing, and maybe that what might be it. What is your perception in regards to what's needed well, for well, Chhatri music? I think you definitely hit. I think you definitely hit the nail on the head. Let me tell you this. Um, this is a question I put. I put to someone actually today in a TV interview I did. And I asked them. I said, I said, what? Where do you think Chutney music is going to break? And where do you think it's going to make its biggest mark? Do you think it's going to make its biggest mark or break in the U.S. or Canadian market? Or do you think it's going to break or make its mark in the Bollywood market? And the, and the answer to that question is the Bollywood market. And I think that's the that's the area we we have to concentrate on. I think that's the area that we have to look at. And as a matter of fact, um, I, I, I was told something yesterday. I'm not going to let the cat out to the bag yet. But I think there's an announcement that's coming very soon from one of our local artists um, that is going to blow Chutney out of the water. It's going to be a big announcement. Um, and, and I think it's going to definitely be taking, um, if not one, or more than one of our artists into that Bollywood market in a very, very big way. So I'm looking forward to that. And I think that is really the mark we have to concentrate on. So, so I think you're right. You're definitely right. Now, now, George, in regards to that, right, this year, there's been a lot of more Bollywood melodies and, you know, some innuendos in regards to that. Now, everybody's saying that you're bringing that back, you're allowing that back this year. Why the well, change? It's not, a matter of allow, it's not a matter of allowing it back. There are some songs that have some a bit of borrowed melodies in it. But listen, Alan, let me tell you something. And I said this in a meeting today with Artie. At the end of the day, we are doing a show. We are doing a show for a market. We have to please our crowd that is looking at the show. We have to make sure that we have the best songs in the competition. We have to make sure that we have the best songs on radio. We have to make sure that we get those songs crossed over. We have to make sure that Trinidad and Tobago appreciates what we're doing. You know, and I think what I did this year is, is I reserve the right as a producer of the show to allow certain songs to be entered into the competition. Now, let me get that straight because a lot of people misunderstand and misconstrue what I say, right? When the songs are submitted for consideration, it must go before a screening committee. Before it gets to that screening committee, which selects a semi-finalist, right? I would listen to the songs and if there's a song that is not appropriate, or if, for example, in the past we had songs that had um, glorification of alcohol and that type of thing, right. and it was not allowed, we would take it out before it even got to the screening committee. All I have said this year is that I have reserved the right that if I feel that a song is a, is, is a popular song, it's being played on the radio, right? we need to make sure that these songs are included and considered right, for the competition. And, that, and, and, that, and that's all it is. At the end of the day, we need to make sure that when we hit Skinner Park, or wherever we do that final, that we have the best show possible, presented not only to Trinidad and Tobago, but to the world. Okay, so George, so it, with that being said, thank you for the clarification, because, you know, everybody's asking that question, you know. Certain songs, you know, have that Bollywood melody or some sampling and so forth. Now, that goes back into what you just said a little while ago in regards to... But Alan, I want to make, make another point to you. Yes. And I said it again. Again, I said this in a meeting today. Do you know that this particular topic of borrowed melodies, right, and Bollywood melodies, and whatever you want to call it, only comes up among our Indian artists? Yes, there only are, during CSM are time. There borrowed melodies in soca music, winning competition, and no one speaks about that. Why is it that we only speak about it in Trusty? It's there only... have been years past when people have won the soca monarch. One, the Kobe Soka Mona, with songs that have had borrowed melodies. No one speaks about it. But as soon as an Indian artist sings a song with a Bollywood melody, it's like he has, he has committed a crime. Why is it we are pulling down our own people and our own music? I don't agree with that. Well, we go back to that crab in a barrel thing, because this only happens during CSM time. You don't hear it about it. It only happens at CSM, and it only happens in our chutney market. Yes. And it has to stop. 
But George, it's only for that six-week period. Once you say these are the people that are in from the beginning of entry to when, when we crown a king or queen, that's when you hear about this. Now, like I, the question I wanted to bring to you, with the borrowed melodies, does this mean, could this possibly mean that this year, in regards to what you said earlier, that tapping into that Bollywood market is probably what's going to be able to help Chutney well, music cross well, over well, uh, to that. That's all. Let me let me just say, let me just say one other thing, Alan. Because because the, the, the other thing I want people to know, right, is that you cannot enter Chutney to come on out with a song that is a complete Bollywood song that you just take the, the melody and you put the lyrics on it. That is not going to be allowed. People have used little little, little bits of pieces of Bollywood songs that that, that might sound familiar, right, and they put it back into the music. As a matter of fact, I don't have a problem with that. I've spoken to many people, I've spoken to copyright organizations, and we found a formula and we're working with that formula. So that, that as far as we concerned, it's going to be what we go forward with from, from here on. Okay, there you go. You guys heard it from the man himself in regards to that aspect. Now, I know today was the meeting and stuff like that, and some things came out. Uh, you know, uh, I know um, your, your post a few days ago was 49 artists, but I know you have something on Facebook that says 40 artists are performing. Why from 49 to 40? Okay, no. That is actually, it's actually 49 artists. So let me okay. clarify that. Okay. It's 49 artists, right? We haven't reduced the number of artists. That was a, that was a graphic that was done. Before the semi-finalists announced, so it's still, 40, it's still 49 artists. Okay. Um, that was a graphic that we had done before, it was supposed to be 40 artists in the semi-final. Of course, we selected 49, so it is actually 49. Okay. So to clarify that, there are 49 people in the semi-final, 49 songs. Okay, great. So, and we know there's, I know, uh, why the change of no venue? One has been, no one has been eliminated. No one has been eliminated. Okay, great. Why the change of venue? I mean, going to Day Bay Water Park, that's a huge family atmosphere. You know, I commend you on doing that in regards to being able to get the families and them involved and so forth. Why the change? The change of the venue, you asked me, right? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, Reality Complex, we've been there for, for many years. We've never done a semi final down in the Day Bay area. Right? The semi-final is a big show. For those of you who are familiar with Trinidad and Tobago, you would know that Debe, Debe and Pinal is really, it's is, is like a heartland. Chagones is also the heartland. Puva is also the heartland. But so is Debe and Pinal. There's a huge market in South Trinidad that supports Chutney. So we, 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 we were looking for a venue in South Trinidad. We came across artist venue, Fun Splash Water Park. It's a fantastic venue. I think the, 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 the ambience of the venue is going to lend perfectly to the show. And I think Saturday, the hype around it show right now, it's so high. I think we're going to absolutely ramp up that venue. Um, so I think that's going to be a really, really exciting show. I think so, because as you know, I know when you made that change to um, Queen's Park Oval a few years ago, it wasn't, um, it wasn't well welcomed by your, your people because, you know, South Tex, George Singh, San <laughs> Fernando, South Trinidad, going in the heart. That's the heart of Chutney music. A lot of yeah, the artists yeah, yeah. in them. But it's, you know, Alan, I'll mm -hmm. tell you something. I still believe that that Port of Spain thing could have worked. If they had left me there for three years. You know, I was encouraged by the then Minister of Culture to move to Port of Spain. We went to Port of Spain. And then immediately after the show, the same minister said to me, he said, George, you know what? Go back south. You know? And I went, <laughs> <laughs> I went back to south. You know, but I think if I had stayed in Port of Spain for three years, it would have definitely made a difference. At the end of the day, Alan, we wanted to make a point that Chutney Soka music had arrived in, the, in Trinidad and Tobago, in the world. It was something to be, to be contended with. And I wanted to drop it in the middle of Port of Spain and make a serious point to Trinidad and Tobago that this is about Trinidad and Tobago. This is about our music. This is about our people. This is about our culture. So where better place to put it than in smack in the middle Queen's Park Oval, middle of Port of Spain. For me, that show was a, it was a, was, was a, a signal, it was a statement, and, and I have no regrets about doing it, and, and I'm, I'm proud that we were able to do that. And I agree, Queen's Park Oval is carnival, you understand? You have an event in Queen's Park Oval that is amongst the elite of elite, and plus it's more central, lies for everyone from north, south, east, and west to get there. You know, you go there for carnival, why yeah, not go there for, for CSM? 
Yeah, definitely, definitely. Now, George, um, you know, I already got some information back, you know, in regards to the performers have four minutes for this weekend. Um, you know, I'll bring the, I, I heard about the prize money breakdown and stuff, but I'm going to present that to you to let everybody know, because as we know, with the change of government, with the talks of recession and so forth, a huge supporter of the event was the Trinidad and Tobago government. And now they had announced a few weeks ago a huge decrease in prize money towards the, towards the competition. So if you want to elaborate on that aspect to everyone. Right. No, let me, let, me just say, let me just say that, I mean, at the end of the day, we are very grateful to the government of Trinidad and Tobago for their continued support. The government has, has I mean, five years ago, um, the former prime minister really did, it, did raise the prize level. It raised the bar in the competition, um, raised the level of money that was coming into the competition. When, with the change of government and with the economy taking a dip in the manner in which it did, um, with oil prices as low as it is, and, and with the country going into a recessionary period, it was expected that, that prize money may have been cut. So the cuts for us um, did not come too much of us as a surprise. They were deep cuts. Um, and as a matter of fact, when the cuts came and the announcements were made, um, we were a bit concerned that the traditional element of the show was going to be eliminated because the government only announced 10 prizes. Right, of which first price was a million dollars, second price seven fifty, third price five hundred thousand, and then everybody got a hundred thousand after that, which is still very, very good. Um, but the problem was that we lost ten ten contestants in the show, and that would have technically eliminated the traditional element of the show. Since that announcement was made, I had a meeting with artists. I presented the problem to them, and I, I wanted them to understand. I laid all the cards on the table. I was very honest about everything. And uh, I wanted them to understand the situation that we were in. Since then, I've been meeting with... I met, I've met with several government ministers. I've been continuing to pound on the doors of corporate sponsors and that type of thing to get additional support, right? And, and really and truly, I think that we may be able... To, to, to get a small amount of money to bring that traditional element back into the show. Actually, after my meeting with some of the government ministers, the last thing they told me, <clears throat> in many instances, um, was that we should try to keep that traditional element in the show. I don't know if your, your listeners would remember, but last year, when we reintroduced that traditional element into Chutney's Pokemon, we were challenged in court. And I had to go and sit in court for several days, yes, several remember. hours every day, right? Fighting to keep, fighting to put that traditional element into the show. So it really would have been a shame if that traditional element was lost this year. I'm happy to say that I think, and, and I must tell you that the government has been very responsive. They've been very cooperative. They understand the importance of Chutney Soka Monarch to Trinidad and Tobago. They understand the importance of, of what it represents. And they have really been trying to help to see where they can raise some additional money. What I presented today to artists was a, was a proposition. It was not confirmed. But I told them, I said, listen, we have a certain amount of money that is being proposed. And the traditional prices are going to be a little bit lower. Right? But let's work with this this year. We're in a recessionary time. Um, you still have an appearance fee that is going to be $50,000 for, um, for the traditional competition. And uh, I think that is still a very good, a, a very good appearance fee. I'm hoping, um, actually, they all agreed that they, it was an acceptable fee. So I have to now go back and see if we can get that firmed up, finalized before Saturday show. Also, oh, that fifty thousand appearance fee and the hundred and fifty thousand first prize for for That's right. traditional is not one hundred and fifty thousand first prize. Right, is not and fifty thousand appearance fee for nine art. Okay, so that's that's, that's still in the proposed, works. Eh? Okay. That's what's being proposed. So I have to take that back now and make sure that I get it confirmed. But it has really been a fight, Alan. Um, and I think people need to appreciate that. Because at the end of the day, there's a lot of, there's a lot of misconceptions about government's funding of Trotty Soka. Where a lot of people think that this money goes into my pocket. This money is actually paid directly to artists. And people need to understand that. You know, and I think it's, it's the greatest investment that government makes in culture because it's a direct investment into the artistic community. And I am proud that I've been a part of that over the last 20 years, 
you know, and I think it has done an amazing job to grow the chutney soca industry in Trinidad and Tobago and through the Caribbean and through the world. And I, and I got to agree because in regards to, you know, prior to, you know, from years 1 to 15, prize money was in the $100,000 range and then to jump, jump prize up. Prize money was small. Yeah. To prize money was small. Today, today, today I was talking to Rupla. You know, and Rupla was out of the competition for a number of years. Eight years. He came back in 2015. When he came back in 2015, Rupla walked away without winning the competition. His appearance piece in 2015 was $200,000, right, for both categories in the competition. When he left the competition somewhere around 2008, and he won in 2008, that was his first prize. So that alone tells you how much road, how, I mean, how, the kind of progress that we've been able to make over the last 10 years. Well, exactly. So in regards to the Chutney Soka side, what is the prize money breakdown this year? Because I heard 150000 for first place and then 50000 again for the CSM part of it. Traditional. Tr for, no, for the... No, that's the traditional part. Okay, and in regards to the, you know, Chutney Soka Monarch itself, not traditional, what's the prize... Chutney Soka Monarch prize money is $2.95 million in total, right? It's a mm -hmm. million dollars first prize. 750,000 second prize, 500,000 third prize, and then 100,000 appearance fee for all the balance of the earth. So, in regards to eight years ago to now, it's still a huge increase, as you just said. It, it, is, still, it, it's still, it's still, it's still a sizable increase. And the prize money in total is still around $3.5 million, which is still a significant amount of money being invested directly into the artistic community. Now, in regard into your meeting today, how did they handle that that dip in regards to the to the the CSM part of it, Chutney Soka Monarch Prize money? Say again. How did the artists handle that when you gave them the allocation breakdown compared to, uh, to for this year's prize uh, structure? Well, well, this is something that they, they would have seen a couple of weeks now. It's been in the public domain. Um, the, the announcement was made directly from cabinet. So this was a government decision that came down concerning the International Soka Monarch and the Chutney Soka Monarch. So this is not a decision that we made. This is actually um, what government has decided to do. And they are paying the money directly to artists. And I think um, all the artists are satisfied. A million dollars is still a million dollars yeah. um, in, any, in, in, in any currency, you know, unless... Unless it's really a currency that really is not worth anything. <laughs> but a million CT dollars is still a considerable amount of money for an artist that is performing on that stage. So I think um, 750000 as a second prize is the biggest second prize that we would have ever had. And 500000 as a third prize is actually the biggest third prize that we would have ever had. So at the end of the day, the prize is quite still very attractive. Well, that's great. Now, let me go back to the traditional side for just a second because... On the traditional side, you have, we could call them international artists. Artists from abroad, you know, Aaron G. Wan Singh, uh, Mar uh, Sarah Ali, Dave Lau from Orlando and so forth. Now, you know, one of the, the things is in regards to that, or Shiva Lakan as well, a, a lot of people, the overseas artists, they, they always keep saying they don't get the airplay in Trinidad. And that kind of gives them that backpedaling or kind of behind the eight ball aspect, you know. It, can CSM, can Chutney Soka Monarch assist these artists in them? Because, you know, a lot of them have some very good songs, you know, for the past couple of years, but they, they're not, they feel that they're not getting the same, you know, the fair playing ground that they would need to get in regards to Trinidad and Tobago. One of the things, well, for, well, for example, okay, let, let's use this here as an example. Yes. And let's use Dave Lal as an example. Dave, Dave Lal's song in Trinidad. Um, yeah. It's, it's quite popular, and, and I know for a fact that it gets a lot of airplay, right? So, so Dave Lal does not fall into that category. That's one, because I know that that song gets, gets, uh, gets, gets quite a bit of airplay. I've heard it quite a number of times. Mm -hmm. um, you know, one of the things I think we, we, we do, and, and this, this problem is not only, it doesn't only affect international artists, eh? because that came up today in the meeting also, you know, uh, radio stations some, sometimes... They would play all the songs, they would pick a batch of 10 or 15 songs that they like, you know, and they put it on heavy rotation. Yes. And then they play, they play one or two songs um, when they feel the play, you know. 
and, and that is a problem not only with our Indo stations in Trinidad, um, Alan, but, but with stations all over the world. And you, when you look at our radio stations play music, you know, they have a playlist and, and they basically have a playlist that they have to work with. And the playlist consists of, of what is the top popular songs people are requesting and that type of thing. What I have done differently though, <laughs> this year, is I actually went in and I had meetings with both 103FM and 101.1, Wind Communication, right? Because yes. those are the two official stations that need to come on up. And I had meetings with one of the executives laying out the points that, listen, these are contestants in a competition, they are buying for prizes, and we need to get the airplay. So I make sure that they all, they have all the songs to the semi-finalists, and, and it's up to the, I mean, I can't physically go to the radio station and force them to play the music. <laughs> right, exactly. What I, what, I, what I do is I make sure that they have the music, I have met with the executives, I have told them what I want, what we expect, and, and I hope they do it. The one other thing that we did this year is we took the initiative and I asked the executives in these radio stations to, to allow me to have a chat with their announcers. And both 103 FM and 101 allowed me to have a meeting with their announcers where I designed a bullet point list, right, of what Chutney Spoker Mart is about, things that they should talk about. So when they talk about the show, they talk about it in an educated way. And also, the fact that they must play the semi-finalist music and as we get to the final, of course, the finalist music. I commend so, you, so I I commend you on that, doing I mean, that. We're, we're constantly working, we're constantly working on getting, on getting the right formula, but there will always be little issues. Well, I definitely commend you on that because I myself was in Trinidad last year and I'm going to use Dave Lala as an example because I had, I had, um, he was in Trinidad, I had access to a certain radio station there and they told me that Exactly what you said. They only have a certain songs in rotation. Unfortunately, his song is not in that. You know, so I commend you in regards to because that's the two prominent um, stations, which is your official stations. And I'm glad that you you are doing that for the artists. And then 49 songs is a lot of songs, and you know everybody it deserves. A lot of songs. They deserve their chance. So I gotta commend you on. on you know what is interesting this year? You know what is interesting this year? Let me tell you what is interesting. 15 years ago. When we would go to a preliminary round at Summer Entertainment Center in Tina, we would, we would sometimes have 49 contestants in a preliminary round, of which, out of that 49 songs, half of them would probably be not very good songs. <laughs> what we have this year is we actually had about 75 songs out of the 100 and something songs that were submitted that were eligible for that semi-final. Of course, you can't go with 75 songs. Yes, I agree. So what I'm saying to you is we have 49 really top songs that, that are going to be performed at the Fun Splash Water Park in Davie. I'm sorry your listeners from all over the world can't travel into Trinidad, right? <laughs> if you can, that is a show that you should not miss. Get on a plane, get down to Trinidad. The show is on Saturday. It starts at 9 p.m. And it's going to be a, an absolutely fantastic show. Well, tickets out of Fort Lauderdale with JetBlue is two hundred and sixty-four dollars round trip. But um, are you going to be doing? Are you going to be streaming it like you did last year on Win TV uh, for the semifinals? Or no, it's not going to be streamed. It's not going to be streamed on TV this year, right? I know that Win Communications is pre-recording it. They're packaging it, and it is going to be the semifinal is going to be shown either somewhere between Sunday or Monday. I will post the information on that. Okay. So unfortunately, they're not going to be able to see it live. However, the grand final, definitely you will be able to see it live. It will be on the Win Network, Win Caribbean. Um, so you can definitely look out for that. It's also streamed. 103 FM will have a stream, um, their internet stream. And 101.1, more than likely, would have an internet stream. Okay, great, great, great. So, George, I, I know... Um I'm taking up a lot of your time, but I thank you very much for, for taking the opportunity to, you know, enlighten a lot of the, the listeners and them, as well as a lot of the artists and them are locked on as well. So, you know, really commend you in regards to that. And, you know, 21 years, like I said, that is not something that's, that's easy. And I got to commend you because you get, a, you get a lot of lash. I know that. You just get a lot of lash. So to, to keep getting back yeah. up. That, that takes a lot of resilience, so I got to commend you on that, George. Anything, yeah. uh, anything else you want to let the people in them know about the competition and so forth before I, uh, I let you go, sir? 
Um, no, I think I think basically we've talked about. I'm sure I'm sure I'll chat with you again before the final. Oh, we will um, for sure. So yeah, definitely we can chat before the final. I I just want people to know that this is 21 years. Um, we're really excited about Chutney's Book of Monarch. It's it's round again. This is the most exciting time for the Indo Caribbean music industry. Um, in Trinidad and Tobago, in the Caribbean, um, and in everywhere where they have uh, Caribbean diaspora. So. Stay tuned, people. It's on. It's this Saturday. It starts, and then we're going straight to the final on the 23rd. How can they get if tickets? Anyone is listening, and they can get on a plane, come down either this weekend or even on the weekend of the final, which is the 23rd of January. The final is at Skinner Park, and you know that is going to be a grand tour. Alan, I hope you're coming down. I'm going to try to make it there for sure. I, I'm trying to get all my, trying to get all my work and stuff done right now. I do I do a lot of W twos and taxes over here, so I finalizing everything to make it. Last year was good time with the thirtieth, but we're going to see what's going right. on now. George, one more thing before I let you go. Traditional uh, chutney coming back in from last year. You did the um you know the presentation of the, the you know the uh, kings of chutney and, and so forth. Um, the legends, sorry, back in 2013. You know, always give credit to Rishi Gaidin. Is Guy Tones playing? They're backing up the, this year again. Has that been confirmed? Say again. I didn't hear that question. Is Guy Tones the band that's backing up again this year? Yeah, yeah. Guy Tones is going to be. Guy Tones is going to be the backup band for all the artists on Saturday. Well, that's and great. also for the grand final. Now, here's the thing, George. Traditional Chutney this year to me has blown. Chutney Soka out of the water from last year to this year. What is your what is your take on that in regards to what what traditional chutney music is doing to the industry right now? Well, I think I think people are excited by this traditional music. Actually, last year when we reintroduced traditional music into the competition, um, I think it blew away the, it blew away a lot of people in oh, the yes. competition, and it took people by surprise. Um, this year, we've seen a lot of traditional music. Um, the traditional music is very good. I agree with you. Um, I disagree with the fact that you're saying that it's blown away the Chutney Soka music because I think we have some very, very good um, renditions of Chutney Soka music this year. Um, however, I think on the both sides, um, I'm, pleasantly, I'm, ple- I'm really pleased with the quality that has been presented this year. I think we are on the right track. We have actually done workshops with artists this year. We're going to continue to do workshops with artists in 2015, that is. And we are going to continue to do workshops in 2016. And actually in 2016, we are going to start taking those shopping workshops into school and tap really? into the young people that are thinking of coming into that music market and in particular that shopping market so that we can, we can, we can um, take them from, from the very young age and start grooming them. I think that that has helped a lot. I think that the meetings that we've had with artists has helped. We've been pounding at them um, about lyrics, about music, about the topics that they sing about. And I've really seen a big change this year. Well, that's, you know? I, I agree. Like Ravi Babaram's song, phenomenal song, compared to what he was doing a couple of years ago to now in regards to that traditional, like we said, Dave Lau. Yes. Now, Ravi Baburam actually had a very nice song. Yes. It's unfortunate he didn't make the semi-final. I, I, but he actually had a very, very... It was a, it was a big improvement from his, from his last song. I agree. Told them the same thing in regards to that. Now, in regards to those younger artists, George, what, what recommendation? Because a lot of these guys in them, you know, if they feel... With they, regards to who? With regards to which artist? No, younger artists. A lot of them feel that they don't make CSM... That's it and stuff like that. You know, I always tell them, don't give up. Keep doing your music and stuff like that. What recommendation? Definitely, definitely. What recommendation do you have no, for them? Let me say this. It makes no sense. It makes no sense going on a social network and talking about everything that you shouldn't be talking about. We have to uplift our music. We have to uplift our culture. We have to uplift our country. We have to uplift our people. And, and this thing about pulling people down has to stop. Look at what we represent and be proud about it, you know, and, and let's support it. On that note, as there's not a better way to end it than on that note, Mr. Singh. Once again, on behalf of Weeting Radio, we thank you very much, sir. And you know what? A song that is rocking the nation. They say this man's going to be the king for 2016. 2016. 2016. 2016. 2016.